Comcast. Damn it, Marvel. You've got every studio thinking they can pull off this look at all the stuff we made legacy logo bullshit. Calm down, DreamWorks. You've already got three boss baby scenes in this uninspired collage for Shrek's sake. Also, a total of 45 seconds of logos, most of which are solely an excuse for the DreamWorks overlords to blow each other. Now that they've all finished and cleaned up, we can finally start the show. Once upon a time, there were two trolls. Once upon a time, narration cliche. And after consulting the official book of sins, I believe that adds up to be roughly... Uh, carry the five, solve for P, cross, multiply, reduce the fraction, divide by pi, two cents! Damn it, I was not alerted to take a massive amount of drugs before the beginning of this movie, and I'm very angry that I now have to pause it for approximately 37 minutes. This techno troll raid was about as awkwardly misplaced as the dance orgy in The Matrix Reloaded. Techno trolls tease tune tempo tampering, taking triumph in tantric tonal torture. The DJ finally hits the drop button, causing at least a few trollgasms throughout the crowd. What was this shit rated again? Queen Barb of the Hard Rock Trolls. Nonsense. Everyone knows that rock's been dead since the advent of new metal 25 years ago. Just a reminder, this entire musical battle with crystal clear stereo fidelity is happening underwater. The shit. They're Scott Pilgriming the Techno Trolls. Are these rock assholes one of the seven evil exes? But by the end of my world tour... We're all gonna have the same vibe. Ah, so the movie is basically Stepford Wives, but with a healthy dose of rock genre elitism. The Steppenford Wolves? We're all gonna be one nation of trolls. Since at least 2010, America's been way ahead of you there, Barb. We are now headlong into Anna Kendrick doing her best Cindy Lauper imitation for Trolls Just Wanna Have Fun. Little known fact, this opening number barely beat California Trolls, Motley Crue's Trolls, 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 and Queen's Fat Bottom Trolls for the slot. You know how Hamilton starts off with a musical number about the protagonist and gives you pretty much all the background you need to start in on an engaging story? Yeah, the first five minutes of this movie is the polar opposite of that. Dude, even Justin Timberlake's avatar here looks like he's bored with just going through the motions in the sequel for another paycheck. Pep it up, JT. Pretend you're doing something you enjoy, like smoking a joint with Joy Fatone. Traveling by airplanes without clearing the proper hair space or leaving from an approved airport. And because someone said the phrase, good times, we're straight into a good times music video. Look, if you're just gonna break out into ridiculous music video nonsense every five minutes, we'll have to send you on our other channel. Music Video Sins. Available now wherever YouTubes are sold. Kids! Also, this is a worse cop-out for explaining reproduction than the f***ing stork story, man. Some kid is gonna walk out here with her pregnant mom and ask why her head isn't getting any bigger. Oh man, this poor bastard was just born 30 seconds ago and he's already been influenced by Takashi69. I can't play any of the music here since the actual trolls from the record companies would come after me, but this number from the pop trolls has so many song mashups that it's even more grating than the opening of Moulin Rouge. That was some fancy footwork, Cooper. Some people just got it. You know these assholes go out of their way to switch person, people, girl, boy, and so on for the blanket name troll for their species. So when they do refer to themselves as people, what are we supposed to think? Do they do other human things like poop or go through puberty or become tax attorneys? Uh... Five it up? Eh, it's not that bad. At least you came closer than any golfer trying to high-five their caddy after a good shot. There you go. Non-consensual heavy eyeball petting. It's a story as old as time. Is it also a song as old as rhyme? Were they barely even friends and then somebody bent unexpectedly? Because I love it when people unexpectedly bend all of a sudden. They took six strings. And those six strings had the power to control all music. So we're going full Lord of the Strings with our mythos then, eh? Which one is this? The Fellowship of the String? The Troll Towers? Return of the Multiple Endings? You're all going to be saved at the end by singing a random eagle song, aren't you? F eagles. Also, this has never come up before. It's almost like the MCU deciding halfway through the run that Infinity Stones were the most important thing in the world, but they were never mentioned until, like, Thor the Dark World. Techno, funk, classical, country, hard rock, and pop. Ah yes, they generally agreed upon six major musical genres. Let me hip hop on over to Wikipedia to see if you wrapped up all the major sellers. Yeah, everything looks R&B. I mean A-OK. -okay. But little by little, trolls became intolerant of each other's music. Pitchfork.com. Also, we aren't even 15 minutes into this and we're going through our second round of Felt's position. What is this, Sunday school? That's why we need to keep our strings safe. Wait, this has been here hidden only by a thin curtain. This whole Time? No one has noticed this in Pop Village since the dawn of trolldom. Branch ran off with the king at least an hour or two ago. So what's he doing here? And why haven't they mobilized the entire village to move out if they previously made a decisive directive? <laughs> they just left the ancient super secret scroll out on the rock. The security in this village is so sh** I'm wondering why they haven't been invaded and occupied before now. Goodbye. Remind me why we care about this c**ko's journey again. I'm convinced the actual leads in this movie have about six lines of dialogue apiece. Only four more strings to go until rock unites the world. I like how this movie presents rock as the primary antagonist. Makes me feel nostalgic like Dee Snyder's about to appear before a Senate subcommittee and lambast Tipper Gore. Where the ever-loving did Branch get that pilot's hat? 
Also, why is he piloting this balloon at all, considering it was shown to be sentient a few minutes ago? All right, Poppy, easy on the buttons! Weird, this is the exact feedback I keep getting during foreplay. I still have no clue what it means. But that's just my man stuff. I love man stuff! Once again, why the gender specificity? Oh, I thought they were all just trolls, damn it. If they function like humans, why did Glitter Troll, who's supposed to be male, give birth to Tiny Diamond? Also, I may or may not have listened to Andrew Kendrick say I love man stuff over ten times in a row with my eyes closed right now. I have issues. You may want to take a look at this. Normally I'd just do a regular sin for this, you'd better come take a look at this cliche. But it's even worse that it's already directly in Poppy's line of sight. One extra, you assholes. Something gnarly happened here. You think? Branch is about as helpful as Forrest Whitaker's empath character from Species. Damn, this instrument sure does enjoy getting blown. No wonder he's pissed that this city's wrecked. Because your music is so boring. Hey, f you, metalhead buddy. Even Metallica cut a record with the San Francisco Symphony Orchestra, so you should know better than this. Case in point, Barb is now attacking them with a rock version of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, which is still classical music, just played with different instruments. My point is, if she really thought it was so boring, would she have taken the time to learn it and adapt it? She took everyone. Why is that? Don't they just need the magical strings? And where the hell did they have the room on those ships to stow everyone? This just got real. Yes, a magical pinky promise between the central protagonist and the peripheral character is when shit gets real. Not when, say, your entire existence has been sacked to hell and back. Good thing Poppy just happened to be holding a penny whistle sized hard hat, because that's something that she would have had handy for sure. Also, is that hat really any more protection than her already metal head provides? I mean, those pansy clarinets might need some head protection, but the flute family are sturdy full. What, 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 what is you, this? What, what? Pop trolls? Yes, the one group you apparently sent an invitation instead of just straight up attacking. An invitation you sent with this very bat. So I'm confused at your confusion. <laughs> Glukake. Oh, I need that pop string. And I know who's gonna help me. The most feared bounty hunters in all of Trolldom. Why does Barb need bounty hunters? She's been beating the shit out of all the other villages so far. It makes her think the weenie-ass pop village would put up a fight. The K-pop game. Yes, K-pop fans are notoriously great trolls, but why wouldn't they be a segment of the pop tribe? The word pop is literally right there in the name. Movie wastes a badass Kelly Clarkson performance of a pretty good song by putting it in this movie. As the pop trolls are doing this medley of a bunch of shitty songs from the last 20 years, except for the Spice Girls wannabe, which rules my ass, I'm reminded that at least this lockdown has spared us any more iterations of that history of rap bit on Jimmy Fallon's show that has been run into the ground, smashed by a steamroller, and then urinated upon by an angry armadillo. You suck! Dicking along with the bumble and digging weeds. Am I not cute anymore? Come on! Now that's what I call humor, volume 57. Did this movie just make a Tremors reference? Because honestly, I'd prefer to be swallowed by a graboid right now rather than have to watch any more of this nonsense. Well, hope pop trolls can swim. Hickory apparently went to the wild Ethelbert Coyote school of delayed gravitying things. Welcome. Weirdly enough, this one sequence of the movie was animated by Terry Gilliam. I think this movie unintentionally provided more nightmare fuel than the Dark Crystal, man. Poppy? I can't. Feel my face. This abominable mix of Kenny G and Christian Grey apparently shoots narcotics from his whistle horn. And now I'm starting to think this is a kids movie that actively promotes sex, drugs, and challenging authority. And that is for European kids movies, damn it. And who are you supposed to be, cowboy pants? Even if he's in a sort of disguise, how the hell does Chaz not recognize one of the only other bounty hunters in the troll verse? Gumdrops. Soundproof. And delicious. Come drop shadowing. You made a pinky promise to me, Queen Poppy. And you broke it. Did she though? She promised that she would protect you no matter what, and as of now you're still just fine. So really that promise seems to me to be fully intact until you're dead. So either die or shut your wine hole, you overgrown smirk. It does appear a little odd, but I promise. This is the most normal looking Parliament Funkadelic show I've ever seen. At least no one's running around in a diaper. How is this possible? Well, it's a very complicated story. One that we somehow have time to tell. Since the A story is roughly 22 minutes long, and we thought that we needed to stretch the feature length to make a mint at the box office, but then yada yada yada, there won't be a third one of these. I want you to meet the king and queen of funk. Why do some territories have a king but others don't? Is there a king of pop? Why is no one mentioning the king of pop? I think your map is a bit outdated. Hmm. Oh, he's right. Look at that. It still has disco. It most assuredly does not. When we first learned of the story of the strings, there were only six, and they were divided into techno, funk, classical, country, hard rock, and pop. And the strings they represent are the whole basis of this story. Sure, the king was lying about the background, but they're looking at the map he presented them. Oh yeah, I I've heard this story before. Right there with you, Poppy. Right there with you. Dude, is it just me, or has this expositional funk song been going on for like 48% of the entire movie? Denying our differences is denying the truth of who we are. How did they get George Clinton to voice this Seriously, did they pay him in a boatload of multicolored robes and purple kush? 
fidget spinners. Exactly what is plugged into what to power this independent vessel? They ran power through a cord to an outside part of the ship to plug into the ship that the power came from? This cord is a lie. Good thing the ship had enough residual power to finish the evacuation bubbles with lights and everything. How the hell did the rock assholes find the funk trolls? They're not even in their designated land, man. They're in a mobile goddamn spaceship. I don't even know why we're friends. Neither do I. I mean, probably for the same reason you're experiencing this forced relationship split about two thirds of the way into the movie. Plot mechanics. Oh look, there's Branch singing a sad song after he had a superficial beef with Poppy that will almost immediately be squashed. It's almost like I haven't seen this in every animated kids movie in the last 25 years. If you want him, you're going to have to dance for him. So both of these bounty hunter groups were able to track Branch down, but their main target, Queen Poppy, is like steps away and they're seriously fighting over who gets to keep the wrong guy? All music should be saved. All right, okay. I'm listening, Pop Troll. So that's all it took to convince these hardened bounty hunters? Nobody's ever mentioned this to them before? Poppy, take the string and run as fast as you can, you hear me? I haven't seen a Sam Rockwell performance in which he's obviously posing as the good guy that will turn out to be the bad guy since 2000's Charlie's Angels. The final notes of pop. It will never invade anyone's brain again. Turns out these strings are easier to find than mother boxes. Leave you alone? Uh, I'm sorry, you were the one who was all desperate to be best friends. Sure, but you were the one who apparently burnt the invitation, only to later carry around with you just in case you needed to make this point. I've got to go back. Jesus, this whole movie is travel, 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 sing, 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 trippy, trippy, talk, talk, travel, travel, travel. And I've suddenly developed a longing for the actual linear narrative of the first movie. Okay, come on. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Speaking of going, how did you get here so fast? Or even know where you were going in the first place? It's a lot of transportation BS that I, for one, would have loved to have seen. I mean, that's obviously a lie. I couldn't care less, but I'm still sending it. Who is in charge of cell design in this place? Because that's some piss poor cell bar construction if you're actually trying to keep something in there. Play the ultimate power chord and then... <laughs> You'll see! Rock tease. Barracuda! Sure, Biggie totally knows the title of this song and the exact time to sing it, despite being a pop troll who considers acts like Millie Vanilli, Lisa Lisa, and Cult Jam, and Tiffany to be high art. I'd give all the sense back if Barb just started playing God Gave Rock and Roll to You, like they did at the end of Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. I don't care if it's the Argent, Kiss, or even the Petra version. Who wants to see what the ultimate power chord can do? Considering this is all new territory, I'm curious how you even know what it would do, or even that it exists in the first place. I guess a giant comprehensive manual does come in handy. Yeah, but Poppy threw that shit overboard like hours ago, so how'd it reappear? So, to summarize the last few minutes of the movie, Barb is turning all the non-rock trolls into rock zombie trolls, and I guarantee goddamn to you, it's only so they can merchandise some goth trolls to vulnerable kids after this came out. Who wants to party? Without smiling. This line would be a lot funnier if the shot didn't immediately cut to a bunch of the rock trolls all currently smiling. In a second, you'll find out she's faking this. That's right, she's somehow faking a completely changed outfit and glowing red eyes. Feel free to just go with it, but I've got a job to do here. Oh cool, look at their faces. They all look the same, just like the end of Volcano. That's right, the music was in you the whole time. And not a single bit of this entire movie mattered. Sure, I'm glad we spent all that time going over the history of strings and such. Those are my sons. Making music. Stage parents. And for the finale of this movie, we bring you a very special performance of the Broadway sensation Stomp. It's alright, Barbara. Just let everyone be what they want to be. Seems like Daddy Ozzy's been on board with this plan all along, so why'd he let Barb run amok this long? Hell, she was two gumdrops away from f***ing the whole world up. You know, I was gonna take a sin off for the good message of merging all the types of music into one harmonious medley, but they blew their wad, man. There's a line where it's too much, and that line is right around when a brief country interlude is followed by a single fierce K-pop moment that only exists for fan service. Shall we? Wow, that's intimate. I'm pretty sure this is the troll version of anal. Okay, that's kind of a cheesy pointless callback, but at least we don't have to deal with another lazy flannel graph exposition dump. In the beginning, we were divided. Damn it! Closing credits contain no can't stop the feeling. Just because you're not in the band doesn't mean you're not in the band. Do the CinemaSins guys secretly love movies? Shh! Have they had a podcast devoted to discussing movies called Sincast since 2015? Shh! Have they had a vast array of movie talks, deep dives, games, guest interviews, Q&A, and much more on the Sincast? Damn it, I said keep it down! Oh, screw it. The secret's out. Check out the Sincast every Monday and more wherever you do your podcasts. We have fun. Get ready for the drop! You ready, little buddy? <laughs> Uh, what's up is, I, uh, I, 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 I... I'm in lesbians with you. 
They're different in ways you can't even imagine. I don't know. I can imagine quite a bit. What are you doing? Oh, nothing. Ooh, Poppy's busted. I got a brother f***er taking care of my kid. shouldn't have anything. Brother f Road trip! Yeah! Roads? Where we're going, we don't need roads. Growly, growly, growl. I was no good why you steal my f***ing voice. Oh, don't grovel. One thing I can't stand, it's people groveling. Hello there. Hello there. And who are you supposed to be, cowboy pants? <gasps> my name's Hickory, and I don't much care for smooth jazz. It's important that you know you can leave at any time. You know what the worst part of all is? I never learned to read! What I did was a really dick move, and I shouldn't have changed this out without asking you guys. And I definitely shouldn't have left.